Yesterday morning, we had a lot of callers ringing up and saying that they were getting uh, phone calls and messages left on their answering machine from people, sometimes with a foreign voice, suggesting that they were from the ATO, the Australian Tax Office, and that if the person called didn't pay a debt immediately, they would be handcuffed, arrested, taken to court, the whole caboodle. Now, a few people knew immediately that this was a scam, but we've had a lot of emails yesterday and more follow-up calls. So obviously there's a, a concerted campaign going on at the moment. So we thought the best people to talk to, given that it's Fraud Awareness Week, is Deputy Chair of the ACCC, Delia Rickard. Delia, thank you for joining us this morning. Good morning, Leon. First of all, whereabouts do people get uh, the contact numbers to ring them and play this on them? They get them from multiple sources. Contact numbers are available through the telephone book. In this day and age of ID theft and fraud, scammers can buy lists from multiple sources. So there's a whole part of the web where organised crime scammers exist. They can buy lists of all sorts of numbers. They can match census data with postcodes to target particular areas where Mm -hmm. they might know their retirees are more vulnerable and there's a bit of money around. They are very clever at getting them. I can't explain everyone, but that's some of the sources they use. Now, have you been given contact about this ATO scam? We know about this ATO scam. We've had over 6,000 reports of it and over a million and a half. Yep, and we've seen about a million and a half reported loss to us. I think that's just the beginning of it. And it's very scary, Leon. What they do is you get a call out of the blue. They tell you that you owe tax. They say it's several thousand dollars and that there's an arrest warrant out for you. And if you don't pay by that afternoon, the police will be turning up at your door, arresting you, taking your household chattels that changes from bit to bit. And we hear stories about them keeping people on the phone, but sometimes hours walking them down, telling them which bank to go to, getting the money transferred. We'll obviously go through usually a few bank accounts and mules to disguise where it's going. And it's happening all across the country. Where is this coming from? These scams are coming from overseas. Any particular place? It's very difficult. So we have some ideas that I can't say exactly. The call centres seem to be coming from, from the sort of subcontinent region. All right. Now, there there are some who suggest, is it practical to ring Telstra or your provider and say, look, I don't want any overseas calls? I think that would be very difficult. I don't, I'm, not, I'm not conscious that they, can blo- that they can block them. I do think it's a good idea to have caller ID on your phone. And if there's just a bunch of people that you know that you like to receive calls from, have that plugged in. And if a number's not coming up, don't answer Unfortunately, with a lot of these, they're very good, even though they're calling from overseas and using VoIP technology, Mm. in having a a local number appear. So we know of some of these. They've, you know, had Sydney numbers, subs in appear, Melbourne. So it's very difficult to recognise who they are. But basically, the ACO is never going to call you out of the blue and say you're about to be arrested for unpaid tax. They do make phone calls, but they do them professionally. And, and they don't jump from nothing to arrest. So if you get a call from somebody purporting to be from the ATO, what do you do? Just hang up? Just hang up. Yeah. Just hang up. If you're in any doubt whatsoever and you think you might owe money to the ATO, get their phone number, not from the call that's come through, but from the phone book or yes. do a Google search and call them. And this is, this is a very nasty and more complicated twist I'm going to add. What we're now seeing is where the scam has called you on a landline, they instill a sense of panic in you. You've got enough sense to think, well, I'm not just going to go on their word. I'm going to find the ATO's number myself and call them. And you then pick up the phone and call quickly. And what's happening is the scammers aren't hanging up and they will then pretend to be the ATO. So leave it for a while or if you've got a mobile phone, use a different phone to call back in case they're doing that. I know that's complicated, but this is the latest sort of morphing that we're seeing. Now, look, I notice in your list you've got uh, organisations or, or if you like, uh, retailers that aren't really retailers. How do you, how do you, if you're buying something on the net, I mean, you can do it privately and that's another issue, but uh, you've got on your list and there's quite a bit of money. False, there's false billing at 41000 We know what that is, always checking your invoices, but yep. fake trader websites. Now, how do you know somebody's a fake trader? Well, there's a couple of clues. They're very good. You can't tell from looking at the websites. They look just like the real thing. They're very splash and all of that. Um, 
One is always look for HTTPS in the URL line and the lock padlock. Yep. Two is how they ask you to pay. So often they will ask you to do a wire transfer, something like Western Union to pay. Now, no legitimate trader is going to do that. They're going to work through credit cards. Um, so the payment, if, it, if they're asking you to pay for something like a wire transfer, I just wouldn't go anywhere near it. Um, secondly, do an online search and see if anybody else has had a bad experience and it's, it's a fake thing. Yeah. Um, sometimes if there's particular wording of an attractive offer, people who have been scammed will, will, will then write about it online. And if you put that wording in, that will show you. But the, the most important thing is the payment mechanism, that HTTPS, the S is the important bit, and the padlock. And just... Do a quick search to see if anyone's had anything negative to say about them. By the way, has the ACCC successfully prosecuted anybody in the last year or two for, for any of these sorts of behaviours? Uh, we, we have fake, successfully prosecuted people around the fake, um, fake invoices scams, yep. but most of these people are overseas. To, to catch them is incredibly resource and difficult and, diffi- and expensive. And what's more, if you do, it's a bit like taking your hand out of a bucket of water. There's a queue of hundreds more scammers to replace them. Yeah. So what we're trying to do is be a bit cleverer in the way we work. And we've had a particular focus on these relationship romance scams. So we've used financial intelligence data to see people who, we do a whole lot of washes on that data, obviously, but to identify people who look like they're sending money in the patterns that scammers requested to certain known countries where we know that scammers hang out, and we're then writing to them saying... Can you give us a list of the known scammer countries? They vary for different scams, but we know that in West Africa is a particular place for these relationship scams. West Africa? And and we have... we don't have a lot of trade with these countries, so you can actually look at the data. Mm. Other places, such as some of the places in Asia where we know scammers um, like to be, we have so much trade, it's not possible to do this there. So we're going to do some other clever things there. But I'll just see, so we write to people, we've written about 6,000 letters. And so far, we've said about 75% within six weeks, stop sending and not continue. So we think that's working. So now what we want to do is a lot of the bigger payments go through the banks. Some banks like NAB are doing really fantastic work already to identify yeah. um, where scammers are asking and stopping it. So we want to work with the other banks to see them doing just as good as stuff. And we also want to look with social media because more and more we're seeing scammers connect via social media, particularly Facebook, to see what more we can do. So if we work with the intermediaries, um, we think we want to be able to stop scammers connecting with their victims in the first place and stop the money going overseas. Delia Rickard, thank you indeed. That's the Deputy Chair of the ACCC with some very handy advice on how not to be scammed. If you've got uh, a situation where either you were or you were too clever, a double two three double O double O.